Hello. So I got a bunch of books in uh, December last year and maybe like a two or three uh, this year so far. Haven't gotten too many this year so far, but there's a lot of them uh, because I went book shopping in person like two or three times and Amazon had some deals. <laughs> so I'll try to uh, go as quick as possible, but this is going to be a longer video. The first one is Machiavelli, his life and times. Uh, I got this. Um, in part because I'm obsessed with like really, really influential people, uh, like intellectually influential people. And I want to see how much of their works as a result of their life circumstances versus their brains or like their raw intellect, getting a more contextualized understanding of that. I think I made a video about that, like how smart is Charles Darwin? Because I'm reading a Darwin biography right now. But another one is Leonardo da Vinci. This might be my favorite person of all time, just because of the fact that he's a, like a famous polymath. And his life is actually quite interesting because it's, it's filled with ups and downs. And he's not like this obsessive workaholic that everybody portrays him to be. A lot of his, of his creativity comes from kind of like whimsical behaviors. But, so that's the second Leonardo da Vinci biography. I'm going to have this a third one I'll get as well. The Coming of the Third Reich. Um, I think this is the third volume by Richard J. Evans. Uh, the Nazis Destroyed Democracy and Seize Power in Germany. Currently going through like a German history stack, so I have it. Um, the Third Reich in Power. Is this the second volume? I don't know. There's an order to these. I don't remember. Uh, I have to look it up. How the Nazis won over the hearts and minds of a nation. The Third Reich at War, uh, how the Nazis led Germany from conquest to disaster. I think maybe this is the third volume. And then the second volume is, I don't know. So I got those. I know there's a bunch of books about that time period that people recommend. Um, I will get more. I know there are a few more that people recommend. Uh, the, great, the Greatest Trade Ever, How One Man Bet Against the Markets. Um, so this year, I also have this focus of like, my primary focus is math and my secondary focus is finance. That's how my reading is going to be oriented this year. And so I got this book because, uh, I mean, it just seems like it's going to be a fun read. It's nothing too big. Um, private equity and asset class. So I want to start a private, uh, this dusty book, a private equity company, hopefully by the end of this year. So I'm going to read a bunch of private equity textbooks, as you'll see. Um, an introduction to private equity debt and real assets. Uh, again, this is just another Wiley Finance series. Um, I'm not sure how much different private equity is from uh, financial analysis of like, uh, sorry, analysis of the financial statements, but we'll see. I'm uh, completely novice to this. Mastering private equity. Um, this is a two part series that came with actually this book, Private Equity in Action. Again, Wiley Finance. My desk is being overrun by books. One second, guys. Um, Invisible Woman, uh, Exposing Data Bias in a World Designed for Men. So this book is actually uh, not like a politically loaded book. It's actually pretty coherent. Like one of the arguments is um, that crash dummies were designed for men. And as a result, women have more fatal accidents uh, because of that. So that's actually a valid, pretty valid point. Um, the Song of the Cell. This is a very famous book. I think this is the guy who wrote The History of the Gene and uh, the Cancer Biography. That's why I got it. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Star Starry Messenger. So I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson has like the most intellectually profound takes, but he he's definitely someone worth reading because he's, he makes things interesting and he's a very, very good science communicator. It's, I think, a testament to his ability that the things he talks about seem so mundane and simple when in reality they're not. Turning point. Um, this is an interview of uh, uh, Miyazaki, who is the um, uh, writer at Studio Ghibli. He's like the, the founder. I think he's like the head uh, writer. And it basically goes over the different uh, books, or sorry, movies that he uh, made. So Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, and Ponyo, right? So that's going to be really interesting. Uh, lessons from a life in private equity, the dealmaker. So this was just going to be something I read as supplementary 
uh, to the textbooks I'm getting, I do have a tendency to see that there is there's a tendency that books like this tend to be washed down because business writers don't actually know anything about statistics nine times out of ten, which is a problem. Um, but this book was kind of longer. It's like one of my heuristics is that when the book is longer, it might actually be a good book. We'll see. Um, the Private Equity Toolkit, a step-by-step -step guide to getting deals done from sourcing to exit. So again, another widely finance uh, private equity book. I think I got most of the widely finance books on private equity. They're all kind of short as well. The History of the Hobbit. Um, I saw this on a bookstagrammer's account and I didn't realize this book existed. And then I was like, wow, this is really great. So this is like a nonfiction study of the uh, Hobbit, um, the book. It's pretty good. Um, God created, you know, God created, yeah, God created the integers by Stephen Hawking. So this is a book that explores formulas. Um, I believe in mostly in physics, but um, just goes over like famous mathematicians and their works, I think. I think that's actually what he's doing. And there's another part to this called Standing on the Shoulders of Giants, which is specifically uh, about physics. This, I think, is just about math. And it's just him explaining the different uh, breakthroughs in math and why they're important. An Immense World. So this is Ed Young. Young. Well, I thought it was young. It's young. Um, an Immense World. Uh, how Animals' Senses Reveal the Hidden Realms Around Us. So this is by Animal Perception. This is a famous author as well. He has a bunch of books. I think actually I actually have all of his books. And the only reason why I bought this was because of his name. I will say I haven't read a single one of his books yet. Uh, definitely sleeping on that. Kind of behind. Uh, Neil McGregor, Germany, Memories of a Nation. Um, I bought this because, again, it's just a history book about Germany. I saw it on Amazon. It was always uh, recommended. I decided I would get it. I know nothing about the book, to be honest. But I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, personality and Power. So a lot of people uh, recommend Ian Ker Kershaw to me. Um, I haven't read any Ian Kershaw books yet, but this is one of his more famous ones. And so I started with this one. Luckily, also, I found this in a bookstore. But uh, just goes over the famous, um, we'll say, leaders in Europe. I want to use any loaded language. Uh, essays and Idleness. So I was in, actually, um, a uh, Japanese bookstore. But it was in Germany. And I was, it was, I was torn between either this or... Um, this book on the tea ceremony. It was like this 400, 500 page nonfiction book about tea ceremonies and how tea ceremonies are actually about enlightenment and not like keeping culture and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm kind of actually tempted to buy the book because it does seem interesting. But this one I got, I went with because I, uh, I like the idea of being idle, of um, kind of detaching yourself from like the goal oriented notions that you find in modern culture. And just sitting around and like maybe like reading poems or something or doing nothing in particular. Nothing with a goal in mind. Uh, next one. Um, so one of my friends brought me to an art store and they didn't have a lot of nonfiction books that I like, but they had a lot of nonfiction books about art, which I do think is interesting. Um, I would learn how to paint if I had more time. <laughs> so this one's about portraits. Uh, this seems kind of cool, actually, because I know nothing about how to analyze portraits. Um, yeah. It's the same thing with, like, classical music. I understand that if you know how to read sheet music and you know how to play, that there's some commentary that you can make about the nature of the music that you can't necessarily make if you don't have that skill. So I, I hope this can actually help me with that a little bit. I can learn how to spot techniques. Um... The social photo, uh, I like photography and this book seemed kind of cool. It was in the same bookstore and it's about like the philosophy of taking photos, but related to like social settings. So that, that should be kind of cool, should be fun. Uh, this one's about architecture and it's specifically about Kyoto's architecture um, and how 
it was built over time and the philosophy that was used to build it. So that would be cool. I uh, do want to study architecture at some point, but art and theory, this was the first book I picked out of that store, to be honest, because it's so thick. It's, it's like, uh, it's like a thousand something pages. Yeah, <laughs> that alone already like piqued my interest. But then it's actually kind of cool because it's going over the history of art theory. Uh, and there's some really, really interesting titles like feeling and nature, originality and genius, right? That, that's really, and it's, it's, a, it's a thorough analysis, right? I love esoteric stuff like this, and uh, I'm super excited to read this book. This is the kind of book that I would want to read in nature. Um, Outlive the Science and Art of Longevity by Peter Adia. So I finally got this book. Uh, yeah, I just, I, I've, re I've read so many longevity books that I wasn't super eager to get this right away, but I will, now that I have it, finally read it, um, see what he has to say, because I do like to study longevity. I might, what I understand is that this book is more scientifically informed and cares more about large sets of data as opposed to proof of concept data, which in longevity science, there's a lot of proof, proof of concept data. Uh, pathogenesis, I, um, to be honest, I, don't, I, I got this book because I just like biology. And I, I do have a, like an epidemiology stack that I started reading but never finished uh, when COVID came around. So I decided to get this. Um, yeah, see how that goes. How Life Works by Philip Ball. So Philip Ball is just uh, an interesting writer. He has a lot of um, unique ways of approaching subjects. And so that's why I got him. I, I actually don't like the design of the book. The design of the book didn't jump out to me. But what did jump out to me was Philip Ball's name. So that'll be fun to read. And then these last two books are some of the some of my most prized purchases. Uh, the Mammoth Book of Chess. So I'm currently going through chess books and learning how to play chess. I think my rating right now is like 1400. Um, I would like to get to at least 2200 in my lifetime. Uh, but I don't want to, I want to do it in a slow way where I dedicate like an hour a day to chess, right? Or an hour a day to reading chess books. And uh, this is one of those famous books that everybody recommends you read. And then the second one, Modern Chess Openings. Uh, this one, uh, is this by um, Spielman? I think there's a bunch of books by Spielman I want to get as well. And this is, this is Furman, okay. So this is just, again, like a book about chess openings, most commonly played chess openings, uh, common chess opening mistakes, very famous games. Um, this will be a fun book to read as well. And I like that it's very long and thick. Again, love, I love really big books. So those are the books I got in early December. Uh, I haven't gotten any, I think I got like one or two this January, but that's it for now, guys. And with that being said, bye-bye.